Hello, I'm Father Martin and welcome to another one of my reflections. These are taking place during the coronavirus outbreak. So before we begin, if we just spend a few moments in prayer, praying for each other and the whole world. Today in England, we are celebrating the feast of Saints John Fisher and Thomas More. Our reading comes from the first reading of today's Mass. And it's from the second book of Maccabees. Eliezer one of the foremost teachers of the law, a man already advanced in years and of most noble appearance, was being forced to open his mouth wide to swallow pig's flesh. Those in charge of the impious banquet, because of their long-standing friendship with him, took him aside and privately urged him to have meat brought of a kind that he could properly use, prepared by himself, and only pretend to eat the portions of sacrificial meat as prescribed by the king. Such pretense, he said, does not square with our time of life. Many young people would suppose that Eliezer, at the age of 90, had conformed to the foreigner's way of life. And because I had played this part for the sake of a paltry brief spell of life, might themselves be led astray on my account. I should only bring defilement and disgrace on my old age, even though for the moment I avoid execution by man. I can never, living or dead, elude the grasp of the Almighty. Therefore, if I am man enough to quit this life here and now, I shall prove myself worthy of my old age, and I shall have left the young a noble example of how to make a good death eagerly and generously for the venerable and holy laws. With these words, he went straight to the block. His escorts, so recently well disposed towards him, turned against him after this declaration, which they regarded as sheer madness. Just before he died under the blows, he groaned aloud and said, The Lord whose knowledge is holy sees clearly that though I might have escaped death, whatever agonies of the body I now endure under this bludgeoning, in my soul I am glad to suffer because of the awe which he inspires in me. This was how he died, leaving his death as an example of nobility and a record of virtue, not only for the young, but for the great majority of the nation.
Eliezer, who we just heard about in that reading, St John Fisher and St Thomas More, could all have easily avoided their respective deaths. All Eliezer had to do was to pretend to eat the pig's flesh and then he would have got away with it. All St John Fisher and St Thomas More had to do was to support the act of succession which made King Henry VIII head of the Church of England and they would have escaped their death. But something prevented all three of them from doing that. It was their conscience. The Catechism of the Catholic Church describes conscience in this way. Deep within his conscience, man discovers a law which he has not laid upon himself, but which he must obey. Its voice ever calling him to love and to do what is good and to avoid evil. Conscience can be described as the voice of God within each individual and it has to be listened to and used alongside reason to make decisions. The church teaches that we must fully inform our conscience through prayer, through study of scripture and the teaching of the church and through experience. We must also follow our fully informed consciences above all else. And that's what Eliezer, St John Fisher and St Thomas More did. St John Fisher was the only bishop to oppose Henry VIII's actions and yet he avoided direct confrontation with his other bishops. He said, I condemn no other man's conscience. Their conscience may save them, and mine must save me. In effect, what he was saying was that if all the other bishops followed their fully informed consciences in deciding to side with Henry VIII, then they should follow their conscience. He, in his turn, followed his conscience in deciding to oppose Henry VIII. Today, the Church faces many issues. Divorced and remarriage, homosexuality, contraception and abortion. In all these things, before we make a decision, we are called to fully inform our consciences. And then, once they have been fully informed, then to follow our consciences. That may mean that as individuals, we may end up making differing decisions. But like St John Fisher, we are called to respect the consciences of others. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen.